Hello everybody, Whitney Labrie here, and this week we're moving forward with the What We Do in the Shadows dining room. Back! For those new to the channel, here's the 15 room dollhouse I'm working on. This is the room that we just completed, the Wizard of Oz room. And now we've jumped down here and we're working on this room. And this is the what we do in the shadows dining room. This is the corner of the room where I'm gonna be adding the fireplace. So we're gonna be installing a fireplace, modifying a fireplace, and creating a non-reflective vampire mirror. So it's gonna be a fun day. This is the fireplace that I'm starting with, and I did purchase this, and it is a awesome Victorian two-piece fireplace. It is a heavy resin, and it has some really great details already on it, and so I thought that this would be perfect for the room. Also, FYI, you can purchase the same fireplace if you're needing one on my eBay website, and today I'm offering a special discount for you as my YouTube viewers, and just as a little appreciation to you, you can find the coupon code in the description below. The great thing about this fireplace place is it already has the details that I'm looking for but unfortunately when I put it inside the dollhouse room it winds up being a little small for the room so I'm going to go ahead and modify it first but before I do that I want to add it to the room so that you can see what it looks like and why I really need to kind of build it up and make it a little bit more beefy so the total height on the fireplace when both pieces are together is a seven and a half inches tall and in some rooms that would be great it's, you know it's a good height and it definitely has the look but for this room it really falls short and so I'm going to need build it up about five inches so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do an inch on the bottom and create a hearth I'm gonna do about three inches between the very top and the wood rail that runs across the room and then I'm gonna do another inch above that wood rail so that it gives the appearance of going of course all the way up to the ceiling and how am I going to make this you might be asking yourself well I'm gonna use foam board remnants that I have left over that I purchased at the dollar store and then I'm going to use some DOS air dry clay to create this stone facade. Now I'm using the measurements that I just took out of the dollhouse to create these pieces and the other thing I'm also going to account for when I create it is the depth of the fireplace that I'm using. Obviously I don't want my chimney to come out further than what is already there so when I consider the depth that's what I'll be using for my base is the same depth as the current fireplace chimney. So this is the hearth base here. And when I flip it over, you can see I've also added a center support because obviously this fireplace is gonna be kind of heavy. Now where I've put the center support is based on my current lighting situation. So I'm gonna be adding a an actual flickering wood logs to this, but we'll talk more about that toward kind of the end of the fireplace build. All right, now I'm just moving forward with building my foam core pieces for the top portion of the fireplace and then the small little piece that's gonna go in between that wood trim and the ceiling. As far as glues that I'm using today for this, I'm just using a tacky glue and a combination of a hot glue gun to keep everything in place. Once all the foam core pieces are built, I'm just gonna lay everything out, kind of map it out to give me an idea of what it's gonna look like. And then I'll just set those pieces aside and let them fully dry. Of course, before these are installed, what I really would like to do is put them in place and just make sure they fit really well and everything looks really good before I start adding the air dry clay. And one of the things that happened when I did put them in there is that I realized that the two top pieces where you can see the wood trim kind of go through, there was too much wood. I think what I wanna do is I wanna, I wanna build up that second foam piece and I wanna cover more of that wood. My original idea was that I was going to paint that wood trim to match in with the stone, but I think because of the shape of it and because so much can be seen, I, I think I need to camouflage it a little bit more. So in order to do that, I just removed that one foam piece and I just built a half an inch onto it. So it looks like this now. And now you can just see a little bit of sliver. And what I wanna do with that little sliver area is I'm gonna probably disguise it with a piece of trim. I've got these little corbels here that might work. I have this piece of door trim that actually matches the other door trim. I have another piece of trim here, a little bit more federal style. And then I found this like composite piece here that might work. So I'm not exactly sure yet what I'm gonna use up there to kind of disguise that piece of wood, but I'm gonna go ahead and add my stones first. And then once I can see it, I think I'll have a better idea of what I wanna do. 
All right, so now I'm gonna grab my air dry DOS clay and I'm gonna start rolling it out. And I'll use those foam core pieces as my measurement guide. The thing about air dry clay, this doesn't dry out so fast that I have to rush to work with it. But of course, the thinner your clay is, the quicker that it does dry so just keep that in mind so i'm probably going to roll it out and i don't want it too thin and i don't want it too thick so i'm probably going to roll it out at about 1 16th thickness and then i'm going to wrap that around my foam core pieces because air dry clay does have some shrinkage issues you do want to make sure that you wrap it all around the back side as well so that way as it dries it will pull but it won't pull so far that you, then you're gonna see your foam core on the side. So I'm gonna do that with all of the pieces. And then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna just take a, I'm gonna actually take the smooth edge of a butter knife and I'm gonna match up the stones that are already on the base of the fireplace that I, that I bought to the stones on the pieces that I made so that they match up and they look like the same size stones. Also, I don't just lay the clay right on the foam core. I do take some tacky glue and I do a very thin layer of the tacky glue also and actually glue the clay to the foam core just as an additional adhesive so it won't fall off as it dries. Now I've taken my pieces and I have put them all together inside the dollhouse while the clay is still wet because I want it to dry in the place where it's going to sit. So for example, the base of it, there's a little trim at the bottom there that I didn't remove of the wall. So I want that clay to hit right up against it. So when I put it back in, it's gonna be like a perfect fit. Same with the trim area too. So once it goes back in after it's dry, it'll have a perfect fit in that area. This is also the time that if you need to make any other adjustments to the clay or the size or the height, this is now the time. And I have not glued any of the pieces together yet either so that I can, again, make changes if I need to do that. Otherwise, if everything looks good, just leave it there and let it dry overnight. Now we're ready to paint the fireplace. What I want to do is color match to the stone that came with the portion that I purchased. With that being said, that can be really difficult to do. And so I'm going to attempt it here. However, if color matching is not your thing, which honestly, for a lot of people, it isn't. <laughs> what I would suggest is just spray painting this all a base coat, like a base white or a base black, and then coloring the whole thing with your acrylic paints of whatever color you wanna do it in. Maybe do a little highlighting as well because of the stone and then go ahead and spray a sealer on top of it. And then you don't have to worry about the stones not quite matching. But I like to be a little difficult sometimes. So I am gonna attempt to color match this putty color. And because I did it in this way, I can't even tell you the exact color combination that I used. I just kept mixing paint until it seemed like it was the correct color. Now, because I did that, what that means is that I have to make sure that I make enough of that paint that I can paint all of it at one time because if I let it dry and then I go back to it later, it won't be the same color. So again, the challenges of trying to color match. It's satisfying if you can do it, but it is really frustrating if you can't. So again, I suggest just coloring the whole thing one color and then starting from scratch with whatever color you want. That will make it a lot easier on you. I did start by painting the crevices between the stones black just to make sure to show depth and dimension. And then I began painting the rest in the putty color that I came up with. And this was the outcome of the color matching. Once I had the color match, the putty color correct, I went back through and I did a black wash over the whole thing, which is basically just my black paint with a tremendous amount of water. I just would smear it on with a big paintbrush and then I would really wipe it down with a paper towel just to absorb up any of the water and any additional black paint. And ultimately this was the outcome. I did also super glue all the pieces together at this point, including my fingers together. A little bit too. I also found a really small piece of trim that I actually loved for the camouflaging of that interior wall trim at the top. So I also painted that at the same time in the same color finishes. The last step for the fire is to take more of my black paint and I just wanted to add a little bit of black detail right in the center so that it had a look of being charred or has a little soot on it from being used over long periods of time. So I went ahead and added that in and on the interior as well.
Now let's move on to making a non-reflective vampire mirror. Now I had to do quite a bit of research on this and I luckily have a friend who is a magician who works at the Magic Castle out in LA and I really was excited to talk to him about this and then I was also sad when I did because I found out that in order to do it the correct way I would need to build almost another room behind the fireplace and then I would have to have the ability to change lighting very quickly and I don't have that capability capability obviously in this application. In what we do in the Shadows movie, we do see Viago playing in front of a mirror with a cup. I can do this movie magic with Tiny Whitney, but I really wanted to do it in real life. So the basic idea is to just take two reflective pieces of material and fold them in at an angle where they're reflecting each other and not the image in front of them. So I sampled this technique with four different types of materials. The first material that I used was reflective paper. And while it was super easy to use and obviously I could cut it with my scissors, ultimately it just didn't give a good enough reflection. You could look at it and say, oh yes, I'm definitely looking into a mirror. The next material that I used was a plastic reflective PVC. It looked like a mirror, it was really good. It was actually, it's actually a frozen lake for like a Christmas village and I was able to score that and cut it down and that worked really well and if you're nervous to use real glass like I actually am this is a great product to use and it would do really well the third material that I used was mirrored glass but it was these small little squares that were already pre-cut this I really liked because it was easy to manage it was already cut and when you fold two pieces of glass together, it does create a center line that you can see. So this actually helped disguise that a little bit better. I'm gonna show you the two that I built out of this glass and then one that I built out of regular glass. I had these two old compacts that you see here and you can see I kind of play with them and you can see how the camera kind of disappears. You can see my Back to the Future hoodie. So if you didn't think I was nerd, now it's absolutely validated. In order to make the real glass, I did have to score it and I'm kind of a weenie when it came to that so I did have my husband do it so these are his man hands not my man hands. A couple things I do want to point out is that he is not using any safety precautions whatsoever. You should use safety precautions so definitely use gloves, definitely use protective eyewear. The next step will be to mount the two mirror pieces up above the mantle. The easiest way to do that is to just take a piece of cardstock and cut it down to the correct size and fold it and then glue your two mirror pieces to the cardstock and it'll look something like this. Now I'd like to build a frame to, of course, go around the mirror. So I have just some wood trim pieces here. I'm going to make just a very simple frame and then add a little bit of some stain and some gold embellishments to it. And then I'm going to go ahead and glue that to the outside of the mirror. And I need to glue it to the outside of the mirror because I don't want for the back side of the frame to be reflected in the mirror. Now let's take our doll and put her in front of the mirror. And you can see here how she can be really close to that mirror, less than an inch away, and you will not see her in the mirror. Now, if you put her all the way to the either side, from a distance, you'll be able to see her. And I just love the way that this mirror looks, and I love how it turned out. There is one thing that I do not like about the mirror. It sticks out to me a little too far. And so with the next mirror that I'm gonna do, which is the regular mirror with not the small square, squares, I'm going to make it slightly a little smaller so that the mirror itself does not stick out as far off of the mantle and I think that will also add to a little bit of the realism. Okay, so you can see here's the new mirror. It doesn't stick out quite as far. And then you can see, it's hard to tell, but I'm filming right in front of it and you can't see me and you can't see the camera. So I'll put the doll in front of it here. You can see that she cannot be seen either when she stands right in front of the mirror. So I just cut down the other frame that I used for the other mirror and I stuck it on this mirror and it works perfectly. Okay, so I'm going to add just a few accessories to this fireplace today. I have a whole bunch of different tools here, some cleaning tools and everything. They're mismatched. This one is cool with this bird on the end of it. Just felt very Victorian to me. I have a hearth fender and I also have a bellow as well for the fireplace. Then I bought this battery operated fire here that flickers and I just thought it was so cool and I just had to add it. 
If I was going to connect this fire pit to a battery pack, I would have constructed the hearth a little differently. I would have possibly made it slightly wider so that it could hide the battery pack underneath, or I would drill a hole into the wall behind the fireplace and have the battery pack sitting on the other side, and then I would have concealed it with some sort of table or other furniture piece. These are some of the things that you'll have to think about prior to the construction of your fireplace. For me, I wanna make sure that those flames are really seen. So I'm going to build up the fire a little bit by taking two pieces of cardboard, gluing them together, staining them brown, and, and popping them inside. I did pop a hole behind because the wiring was in the way. So then I just strung the wiring through and hid it underneath the hearth. And then I glued on the fender to the front of the fireplace. Okay, you guys, now it's time to install the completed fireplace and we'll just add a few accessories, although we'll accessorize it a lot more in a later show. All right, and we'll get our doll out. So this is a really cute Victorian doll, but she's by no means a gothic vampire, but she'll do for now. And then ultimately, this is the end result, you guys. I hope that you really enjoyed this makeover and then the, the fun, non-reflective vampire mirror. I definitely like this one a little bit better. It doesn't hang quite off the mantle as much, so I, I think it looks a lot better. But you let me know what you think. Is this something that you would ever attempt to do or try? I would love to know it's super fun for Halloween I think but I really enjoy it all year I have to tell you <laughs> so anyway that's it for now I will be back with what we do in the shadows probably in a couple weeks I have a couple other really fun projects in mind for us and then we'll get back to the what we do in the shadows gothic dining room if you haven't already feel free to subscribe I really appreciate you being here you taking the time to watch my channel means the world to me I really appreciate it give me a thumbs up comment below and of course please share it have a great rest of your week, and remember in this crazy life, it's the little things that matter. Bye!